today's video, we're going to explore the power and the usefulness of spatial audio in Frame VR. Here I have an online experience based on my home state of Maine that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. As you enter the space to the left, I have a 3D model of a lighthouse, of which Maine has several, and a lobster, and very large posters on the wall depicting some of the facts about the state of Maine. I would like there to be an audio experience related to this lighthouse. I went out and leveraged some free MP3 files from Pixabay, and then found this wonderful app. I'm going to give a shout out to this app called audionodes.com. It allows you to make very simply a multi-track audio experience and then export it as an MP3. If I go to the plus and audio and go find the file that I created, you'll see that it adds an audio file here to Frame VR. Any audio file in Frame is going to be represented by this round ball as well as the controls at the bottom. Now, generally speaking, I don't want the user to be able to see that round ball. I will often use the gizmo to locate it somewhere hidden behind the wall or behind a 3D model so that the experience is built into the frame environment and not something where the user is going to press play or press stop. We can talk about some other ways to do that. However, the important part over here is in these settings for the audio file. So for example, right now, if I turn off positional audio and I turn on autoplay and I turn this off and I refresh the page, then you'll notice that the audio plays no matter where I am in the experience, no matter how close I am to the actual lighthouse. But that's not really how it is in real life. So let's take advantage of the spatial audio that's built in here in frame. If I go back to edit mode, what we want to happen is for when the user comes into this room and approaches the lighthouse, then we want the audio to be available. But as the user moves away from it, then that will go away. So in order to do that, you'll have to turn on positional audio it's going to be important to have loop turned on. So again, if I bury this in here, now you can set the audio range here between near, middle, and far. Sometimes it can be difficult to understand what that means, but if you would like to know where that range is, you can click on this eyeball icon and you are given a visual about where the audio will start. I'm still going to be able to hear that audio all the way over here, which is not really what I want. I want it to be closer, so I'm going to turn that to near. Now you can see that if I'm on this side of the room, I'm not going to be able to hear that audio and the audio should be barely visible here. And then with this white cone, it would be much louder and much more evident. Let's see how that turns out. I'm going to leave everything else the way that it is and I'm going to refresh and enter the space. So now as I enter the space and you get closer, then there you are, it's louder. When I'm on the other side of the room, I can't hear it at all. There you can see the power of positional audio within Frame VR. My next example here is in this World War I immersive experience. As you can see, the instructions say to walk towards the soldier, stop, and listen to the experience of the life of the soldier. Before I do that, I'll explain that I have an audio transcription of a journal from a World War I soldier, and I have it set up such that it is going to be triggered when the user gets close to the first statue. So as I move here, nothing happens. I can look around, and then as you get closer, the audio will start. Malaria was widespread and caused more casualties than the fighting. There was little that could be done to prevent men contracting it. Now what I don't have here set up is any way for the user to be able to stop the audio. You would be able to add a button to be able to have that function. And if you watched my previous videos, you could use the action trigger to be able to stop the audio. In this experience, I have multiple audio files. I have an introduction of myself reading from a script of what I was going to share with the users when they arrive in the space to experience the weather in France. And then just for effect, I have a small audio file of thunder that is set to play when the user first enters the environment. I'm going to put both of those below the floor so that the user will not see them when they come to this environment. And then I'm going to refresh the page. Hello and welcome to my Weather in France Museum. And there you can see that the audio of my transcription starts as well as the background effect of the sound of the thunder. And in this last example from the Women's History Gallery that I created, I have an audio transcript of a who is this character. You'll notice that the audio, which I have hidden behind the wall, is set up to be positional. However, if I turn that off, nothing happens. And that's because I have set this up as an action based on the text box up at the top that says click to hear the audio. If I click on the action editor, you can see that this is a click tap trigger and that happens is that it controls the audio and it plays it. 
So if I click out of this, the user would click here and then they would start to hear the audio. Born into slavery in New York around 1797, I gained my freedom in 1827 after being emancipated. So there you have several examples of how spatial audio can be an important part in an immersive learning experience within Frame VR. There are some other features. They are a little bit more advanced. This should give you a taste of what's possible and get you excited to start creating your own immersive learning experiences here in Frame.